height of the tower as opposed to the building. Most of y'all knew I was a combat helicopter <coughs> in Vietnam. And although that was 40-something years ago, we didn't have night vision goggles, which they probably use today, and some of the other more recent models could tell you, or some sort of impaired uh, uh, vision. Uh, there is a difference between a building and an antenna. And if you do a nap of the earth flying as opposed to civilian flying, where nap of the earth, when I was out, we did it at moonlight because we did have night flying vision. But we flew as close to the treetop tree top as we could because a lot of times we did night research <coughs> and night extractions in combat zones. And so that antenna is a lot harder to see than is the building. And you'll hear things like this from other people if we give this thing time to be examined a little bit more thoroughly. So that's why I'm asking that we table this, and we will probably ask the county commission to table it also. If you've got any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Any questions for our presenter? Commissioners? Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Consider. Have you, I got, I got a question, Ron. Yes, sir. Excuse me. Um, can you comment on some of the other, have you, did you get these uh, 14, or did y'all get them? Well, we, 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 the chamber got them late and didn't have time to go over them with the board of directors and get the input from the business community. As you know, I'm here as a member of the Chamber of Commerce and we're the voice of business. And so anything that we want to do is directed towards protecting that economic engine and that diversity that they bring to the community. So we really haven't had time to look at all the issues and that's why we're asking for time to, you know, reconsider it. Okay, one more question. Yes, sir. What is the percentage, as we talk about economic engine, and I know the movie is a big percentage of that. I've heard <coughs> like half a billion dollars to the economy and like 20% or something like that. Yeah, about half a billion dollars. About, about a half, a half a billion dollars. Annually. Annually. And, and, and we have to consider the intellectual capital that they bring here and, and reside here and the diversity that they bring to make this community, a, you know, a standout community in the state of Georgia. So with that, those are a lot of things that we want to protect. Thank, Thank you. Thanks, Ron. Thank Anyone else wishing to come forward and speak at this time? <laughs> in favor or against? <laughs> uh, Mr. Mayor, I'll, I'll come, come forward. I'll come forward. <laughs> I just want to bring out a few things. I'm sorry. I'm John Gale. I'm on Georgia Avenue, right in the center of the heart of the greatest city. There he is. But, uh, I just want you to be aware of a few things that you might not be aware of. And, uh, of course, Chairman Slaughter and myself have worked diligently for the last three to four years to make sure that Moody does not go away. One of the biggest assets we have here is the fact that we don't have more encroachment than we do. There's so many bases that wrestle with that problem. And, and we have been fortunate to, to not have the encroachment problem. Um, right now, we're trying to get Moody to identify the best parcel that we can buy to prevent any more encroachment. We're going to the legislature the first of the year, and we're waiting on them to identify that piece of land where we can take our delegation and and go to uh, Atlanta to see if they will help us buy that land. Similar thing just happened in Warner Robins. They did a similar thing up there. Uh, one of our representatives thinks that he can get that approved. Uh, of course, there's four pieces of land out there and there's four different kernels that he's like one or the other, and so we're waiting on them to get their heads together. But uh, that is that is one thing you need to be aware of. The other thing you need to be aware of is that right now, you're being watched in Washington, I can assure you. This decision uh, that y'all are gonna have to make is gonna be a precarious one. And, uh, and I would just ask that you take that into consideration because before two, before in the next 30 minutes, there'll be people in Washington know what happened here tonight and will be looking at what happens tomorrow night at the county commission. Um, I don't personally see where anything needs to be changed. I'm like, Mr. Folks, when you start meddling with things, there's things that happen to get in there that you didn't mean to down the road and it could cause us a problem. 
we know that the ATMs are going away probably 2017. We've already been told that, there's no question about it. Uh, so we're hoping that we will get a new mission. And it could be F-35s. They're down the road a little. But the Chief of Staff of the Air Force has told us that the minute that the ATMs are gone here, he can provide us with a mission. What that is, we don't know. But we just need to be careful with, uh, with what we do and what we say and the decisions that we make. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else wishing to come forward and speak at this time? Yeah. Mr. Chairman, I'm, I'm Nick Lacey. Uh, I live at 677 Garrison Road, Great City, and I represent the South Georgia Military Affairs now. We uh, put a letter in your packet that pretty much uh, uh, says what the, uh, the council wants, but I'd like to expand on a few things. First, I'd like to compliment the, the commission for addressing a, a very important aspect of our community and supporting community and, and, and making sure that our land use uh, efforts are are, are and, uh, impact and, and have to be able to make uh, to support that mission. And I want you to know that through the uh, South Georgia Military Affairs Council, we've taken the model of Lowndes County's land use and, uh, and taking that and done the same thing in Berrien County. And we're right now working in Lanier County to get their uh, their land use for such a student. <coughs> exactly what we have here in Lowndes County. And I'm very proud of, of, of the effort. And I want to emphasize that, that our land use here in, in Lowndes County relative to Moody is a, is a premier document uh, around the Air Force and it's a model for uh, for other bases to use, so we don't want to forget that. And, uh, what what you're doing is looking at and, and tweaking that excellent model. We're not tearing it apart. We're we're, we're trying to make a, a, a model better. And, uh, and what you're doing by questioning and going through it and being very careful is uh, is, is extraordinarily important. It's the right thing, the right thing to do. And I congratulate you on that. The atmosphere around what how this has come up. This is a little bit unsettling to me. There doesn't seem to be a, a real good reason why we're doing what we're doing here. And, uh, I hope as you go back and look at this uh, uh, again, that that reason why will come come out somehow because we really need to know the, the motivation of why we're, we're looking and taking a very, very good land use for regulation and, uh, and, and trying to change it. Unless we're trying to improve it and close loopholes. But it, I have an un... un comfortable feeling that there's a camel head underneath the tent. And uh, I just would ask you to continue to be real careful and, as you go through uh, looking at, the, at this ordinance and, and, and making those changes. And let me bring up an example. We have the pre-1986 flat somewhere. I don't know if there is something back in somebody's family history might have had a, a subdivision where they had flats approved at that time but sat dormant for for all these years, and then if we approve what's being proposed, if I, if I understand it right, then that individual <coughs> can bring those documents forth and, and have it so you may have it wrong, but we need to close all the loopholes that, uh, that, that might be open. I have two last points, and, and I'll pretty much follow uh, the things that the mayor said, but one is that the historical commentary <coughs> that was uh, illustrated in the, the last uh, air insulation uh, uh, compatible use on the ACUS uh, thing. It's a very, very important contour. It includes the history of uh, F-4s and F-16s of what we've had in the past. And, and we need to, and the, and the South Jordan Military Affairs Council, as soon as they get the right document that shows exactly where that contour line is, we're going to come back to it the uh, board commissioners and ask probably them to send it to you to, to evaluate that to make that though a principal guideline for the future for all our land use as it concerns as it concerns moving air force base as opposed to just the current noise contour because the current noise contours of helicopters and can certainly will not be reflective of a high performance aircraft like the, uh, the F-35 and for us to have a viable insulation and years down the road, we've got to be competitive for that F-35. The last thing, and the mayor brought this up, 
is that daily I receive the military uh, daily report, and it's, uh, they call it the early bird. And it's, uh, it's military articles from, from all over the world. Military articles that appear in, in uh, newspapers principally that are picked up by the uh, military times. And then they're republished digitally, and then sent out. And I would hope that we here, all of us who include the uh, Valdosta Daily Times, would write a positive, a positive article about what's taking place this evening, and leaving out the sensationalism and the, and, and the different points of view that might be contentious, but to say that what we're doing here is a very positive thing to make the production <coughs> of Moody Air Force Base better. I leave you with that, but I want to reassure you that that Air Force article, the article in the Valdosta Daily Times tomorrow will be read by individuals on the air staff and will be in that publication. It goes out digitally, Air Force, Army, clear across the Department of Defense and the people like me that, that, that read it there. Thank you very much. Any questions for President? Questions Mr. Lacey, thank you for your words this evening. Yes, now, I could, can I just ask mm -hmm. a question concerning a uh, comment Mr. Lacey made about subdivision quarter blast in 1986 going forward? What? How's that stand? Just curiosity. It's a very intriguing example. Our intent in recognizing a lot of records is just to recognize what we do now, which is someone who had an acre lot um, before 2006 who comes up to just develop that lot residentially. They <coughs> bought it to develop residentially. We let them pull a permit for it now. That was our intent for the lot of record. I think what Mr. Lacey is getting at it's Jason. I want you to think about um, a plot that was before 2006 that had, you know, a 25 lot subdivision that was never recorded and shows up as one tax parcel now that you just don't know about. You know, what does that example do to this plot? And I, I think it probably would be allowed to pull permits today, and, and I think these regs would allow those permits to be pulled. So. I don't, I don't know if the, the way it would be enforced now and what the changes you're proposing would change the outcome of that, um, but it certainly is a good example to think about is some hidden subdivision plot that we just don't know about because I wasn't paying attention in 1986. Um, but I do, I, I think that plot would have some validity to its development if it was truly recorded before 2006 or 1986 using Mr. Nick Lacey's example. Um, our intent was to try to help the individuals on smaller development because that's what we typically see, is lots that are less than two and a half acres come in one at a time. I'm not aware of a single example over the past 10 years where someone has shown up all of a sudden with a 10 lot subdivision or a 15 lot subdivision. Um, the closest thing I can think of is a developer who tried to show us plans where they had a mobile home park in the MAZ that, you know, we just basically denied because it wasn't allowed and the plans weren't far enough along. But this example for a whole subdivision is a is a good one. I'm just not aware of I'm not aware of any subdivision out there that has those characteristics. It's a good example. I'm just not aware of, of any of them out there. Okay. Anyone else wishing to speak? There being none, Commissioner, we have any additional discussion? on this matter this evening? Yeah, actually, I, I just, um, I was hoping that we would have heard from the, from Moody, but I, do you have, do you have any comments or inputs on, have you gotten any feedback on what you have so far? I know at our regular, our, our work session last mm -hmm. week, we did not, but I was hoping that we would have some input today. Is there anything you can share with us or? Sure, and, and you know, their representatives are here and it's been a, not to the public hearing, but that's okay because the listening was important. Okay. Um, ultimately, um, verbally from staff and then confirmed through some of their leadership, we've gotten positive comments that the, the amendments you have before you are acceptable to them. Um, but that leadership does not go all the way to the very top. It's, you know, upper but not the upper as far as they're concerned, but they are here tonight should you wish to hear from them or should they wish to speak uh, to kind of clarify that because I can only comment from an arm's distance since I don't, I'm not out there in, in their organization like they are. <coughs> yeah, I, I want to make a comment. Um, 
I go back to, I was on the governmental affairs for uh, several years, back in 95, uh, I think, uh, Ron was there, also when I uh, was going through the BRAC closing. And we went to the Pentagon numerous times, and uh, we had several generals that wears the four stars, not the ones with the birds, but the four stars, that complimented uh, Moody, that, that uh, said how much they enjoyed their, their tour or when they were base commanders here. And they thought, um, we got a lot of positive feedback. They, they said that uh, they appreciated the fact that, 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 that the uh, uh, local delegation and the uh, people in Lowndes County supported Moody as they did. And I look at all of this and knowing what I listened to them back then, and, and, and I'm just being straight up at how this bothers me. Um, we have a half a billion dollar uh, engine in Lowndes County that if we play with it, we could potentially lose it. Now, I know this is not what the county wants to hear, and I'm sorry if that, that's the case. It's going to be up to the county to make the decision anyway. But I sat here and I listened to this and I listened to this and I, I went several years and, and listened to the ones that actually make the decisions at the Pentagon. And I got a lot of heartburn about even messing with this thing, period. Um, so all I'm going to say after this is the decision that we make and the decision that the commissioners make behind us, there had better be a lot of thought put behind this, uh, or either step back and think about it as a whole to begin with, back up and regroup and give some more time on this thing, and let's abandon the whole idea to begin with right now. We already know the, the ATNs are leaving, as it was stated earlier. We don't know what the new mission is, and here we are playing with stuff that could potentially affect Lowndes County as a whole, the city, the county, and everything. So I just wanted to put that out there, food for thought, and whatever we do, we need to be extremely, extremely careful um, because the, the folks got good intentions here from, from Moody, and, and, and they give us the best feedback they possibly can. But unless I'm badly mistaken, y'all are not the final decision on whether Moody stays or whether the uh, the, the new uh, installations <coughs> are in after the ATNs goes. So um, I, I want us to give a lot, a lot of thought to this, and also I want to, I want to, because it really bothers me from a citizen of this county, and that we're if we can make some changes that that, that the Pentagon will say, oh, this is not going to be a problem then I might have that nice, warm, fuzzy feeling. But I don't have that right now. I don't have that nice, warm, fuzzy feeling, quite honestly. And, and I just wanted to say that while we were in a discussion part here. And quite frankly, I don't think we need to make a decision about it. That's my feeling. Any other discussion amongst the commissioners? Anything else? Well, at this time, there being no more discussion, I will... Are you ready for a postponement? I'm ready for a motion. motion. On this agenda item for this evening. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I make a motion that we postpone any decision until the next regular scheduled meeting in November. Any discussion on the motion? Do we have a second on the motion? Second. We have a motion and a second. All in add on there that if we would amend your motion that we would recommend to the commissioners that they follow our recommendation and table it also. It's their decision. Oh, oh, it's their decision. decision. Right. You want to add that to Mr. Carmel that verbiage? And I'll second it also. We have a motion by Mr. Raker with a continuation thought by Commissioner Willis and we have a second by Commissioner Hall. All in favor of the motion, please signify by raising your right hand. <coughs> we got six. If you're opposed to it, we have one. Commissioner Folsom. 
The motion passes this evening, 6-1 to be tabled. 